Hello and welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2019. It's Michael, it's Tam, again, and I'm so excited for this segment because we're talking about <laughs> Astral Chain, one of the games I was looking forward to, to seeing because we're talking anime, we're talking anime cops, we're talking uh, <laughs> mecha anime all in stylish action. Mm -hmm. This is the next game coming out of uh, Takahisa Taura, who worked on Nier Automata. So this is he's leading up this project, so now he's in full control of what he's creating, and I'm liking what I'm seeing. So, uh, but for those who are not aware of what Astral Chain is, can you lay the groundwork for them? Sure. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> I'll say it this way. It's really about synergetic action and the two kind of key words for it. You know, uh, really it's about knowing how your abilities can start kind of, you know, you kind of attack characters, things like that, you attack enemies. But you also simply have a legion. A legion is kind of your, uh, there's different legions, they're kind of attached to you through that chain, right? So as you can see here behind us, uh, you see have uh, you're actually a cop. Yes, you talk about like, <laughs> cops, things like that. Yes, you're a cop, um, and uh, you're in this uh, in this world in which the astral plane exists. And through these astral planes, this um, these enemies come called chimera out of it. And also through the astral plane, astral dimension, you have your um, what's it called? You have your legion. And what's interesting about this, it's not just like all action. It's actually a mix, right? So there's this really fast action, traditional platinum like all for it, which I'll go into that a bit later. And right now, it's also investigation. So what he, what Demetrius just did, he's the guy that's playing back there, Demetrius went ahead and hacked into that camera. And what he's looking at is looking at a replay, and he's trying to track down a woman named Jenna. And that's the replay in gold of where she was at a little bit ago. So he's kind of questioning a few people. And you'll probably also see him, you know, try and be a good cop, and that's him just taking out his baton just, <laughs> just because. Yikes. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It, it's so, <laughs> Um, thank you. So again, you can call upon your, uh, you know, your, gosh, why am I blanking on here? That's all good. It's ZL. All good. <laughs> like, I just know that by the button. Um, what's it called? Yeah, you call upon your, uh, you know, your, pawn, your helper. Yeah. 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 See, now I'm just blanking. It's all good, man. Is it again? Good. Right, Legion. See, I was like, L, <laughs> Luigi? No, that's not right. You call upon your um, Luigi. <laughs> so you call upon your Legion. You're right, and you come out and you can do things. Now, um, right now, again, there's a main story mode. So in the main, uh, there's a main objective. So the main objective says, you know, guide the lost man. What you're really doing is you're still looking for Jenna. But along the way, your main objective, you could also have to, you know, you can get kind of these side events, side quests. And one of them is like questioning these people. So it's like, oh yeah, Jenna, you know, uh, questioning locals. Have you seen this woman? Oh, no, no reason. I'm not really asking. Fanboy freaks out and like, oh, how dare you go around spread dirty rumors. And like, it's, it's really nothing. You know, you have a misunderstanding. He gets a bit angry and then you back off a second. Like, Wait a minute. So he whips out the Legion and, um, Legion, you can actually bind and chain citizens. Um, it, again, super friendly, right? Standard Binding, chaining behavior. them down, just make sure they calm down, right. talk to them. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, you good? Sissy? Sorry, I got passion, it's fine. Uh, but what you're going to see is you'll start to realize that you're not just in control of your character, right? The interplay between your Legion is actually just going to start popping up when we get into game, like when we get into like those battles. But the Legion is also very useful in solving some of these side quests, such as a very angry, upset fanboy. <laughs> I'm thinking like a lot of this calls back to a lot of elements of like maybe Watch Dogs or L.A. Noir, but th this is uh, in a traditional open world as well. So, what other things have you looked at to kind of make sure that you're in tune with like outside of combat that we're doing things differently from others, or that we are combining the best elements of games, investigative games? Um, the way I position it is, it's not exactly open. I mean, it's a little bit open world. We're in a like a, it's a Carmony Square. It's one of the locations that you can okay, kind of explore. So like hub worlds, right? Yeah, it's kind of like a hub a little bit. Um, but there are different locations you can kind of jump to. But really, it's mainly focused on yes, there's some elements of exploration and finding clues and trying to track down you know people. But there's also really getting into some pretty insane combat sequences. So I know Demetrius is like totally jetting to the location. I can feel it in his body. I can see him <laughs> running so fast. And what's funny is while we're running that way, I also want to kind of jump into, if you're a Platinum Games fan, yes, you'll have your Platinum Games fixed. Believe you, we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> um, what you don't necessarily see, and kind of the new blood and the new producers and developers in here, a new ideas. So there's a little bit of this investigation. You're seeing it now. But there's also other elements. Like, I don't know if you saw that a while ago, but Demi just walked over and picked up a can. Um, in the top left-hand corner, there's a little flower symbol. It says 3046. There is actually a way to be a good cop. And it pays off for you because you can spend some of those points and actually level up some abilities. Thank you for Look at that. Good <laughs> citizen. Way to be a model, shining example of the police force. And am I right in thinking that there's also a mechanic where you can rescue cats? 
Is that uh, something I'm, that I'm is, is there a cat rescuing mechanic that was uh, a mentioned? cat rescuing? Yeah, I wouldn't. Or like an it... animal rescuing? Because I interviewed Taras San yesterday, and he mentioned <laughs> there's more that they're gonna be talking about that um, allow people to be kind of like the good cop uh, in the game. Yeah, there are a variety of different um, ways you can interact with citizens and do the right thing. So yes, example, saving a cat may be one of them. Same thing with uh, picking up cans as you're walking around, right? But right now, we're actually heading into the astral plane, right? Now, the astral plane is where all these, you know, where your, most of your fights take place. Now, in the astral plane, again, the bad guys are called chimeras. They are, uh, they're just basically enemies. In the astral plane, things are warped, you know? There's a bunch of basically bad guys coming out trying to destroy the planet. And there's a couple of puzzle elements here. So, we, as you can tell, Demetrius had to shoot that little cube, lowers the wall, and then he's able to get through. And right now, this is kind of an example of a little bit of combat here. It'll get pretty intense in a second. Right. Um, and to go a little bit more into the battle elements, it's one of my favorite things about the game. I remember picking it up for the first time. And um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see that there's actually three different weapons that your ex-baton can become. One of them right now, he's got a small baton. He can switch into either a sword. That's a gun right there. And guns for long-range attacks, and that's his sword. Sword's great for breaking shields and things like that. Now, as you start to attack a character, um, you, or attack, a, attack an enemy, you would press either your weak or your, uh, like kind of your purse, I guess, a uh, physical attack, which is your ZR button, and to create and for you to actually summon your legion to attack, it you press the ZL button whenever you see a blue flash. So that's like a synergy attack, right? Right. Now what's interesting is so you have three weapons for your personal. So he's right now he's going after him uh, after this chimera with that um, with his sword, and he's changing off at the right time to let his legion attack. Now there's multiple legions. So now let's back that up a second. You have multiple weapons with all different combo types. You can tap, you can hold to charge, you can tap, 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 wait, delay, tap it again, and it's a different move. Uh -huh. That also happens for the legions. Legions can come in at one time. You can pocket the legion, put them away. It's something called a perfect call. So if you attack without your legion, oh, I bet Jimmy's just trying to do it right now. <laughs> um, you can actually get one of your legions to, uh, you know, pop out and counter and really destroy them. You can even have two legions out at one time. You can call one legion, send them out, do like some kind of special move so they're constantly out doing damage. Then summon your other legion to come in and do dual attacks. So there's an incredible amount of depth to the level of battle that's really I haven't seen before in a Platinum game. And I started messing with it and I just couldn't help myself. I was there for hours just messing with the combo system. What legion, there's multiple legions. There's a sword one, there's an arrow legion. Then. Even when you have, let's say, a sword legion, your gun and blade moves and all that, it'll be different when you equip the arrow legion. So it starts to get complicated pretty quick, but everyone's gonna have their favorite combos and styles. I mean, your stylish action and combat, you'll have it in spades, and you'll be even working on trying to bind enemies, figure out how to do critical damage, and hold them down, depending on what the enemy patterns are. It gets pretty, pretty deep, and I'm sorry if I'm talking way too much, because I am super excited. This is really the first time we've ever really shown it outside of Treehouse Live, so I can't was so so exciting. <laughs> no, it's, it's all good, man. Because yeah, I, there's there's so many layers here. Because coming off of uh, DMC five, where there's there were a lot of layers there, and especially switching between the different characters there, and like mm -hmm. I see a lot of that here also with with the different legions and with the different weapons. In a ways, uh, it's very overwhelming, but in a good way. And I'm thinking about what uh, Taurasan did with Near Automata, where you know you have different you have the chip set, you have different weapons, and you have pods. Yep. Um, and but it was pretty it was pretty easy to get a grasp of that. But did, going into Astral Chain, was he thinking about like, no, I need to like take things to the next level. How can I just like add even more layers to that formula, especially coming from Platinum with such a such a deep history of doing that? Yeah, I think it's a mix of really surprising people. You know, we've heard also the comment that. You're also trying new things. So yes, the depth is one to get there. Now, but could you also pass the game with just kind of comboing around and just kind of going, you know, ZR, 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 and then waiting for the blue flash and then summoning your synergy attack? Yeah, you could. Do you have to change so much? You don't necessarily have to change so much. So really, it's like the classic Nintendo way of thinking about a game, right? You want to chew a little, you get a little. But you, if you really want to chew a lot, you can even set a skill to, you know, kind of a ridiculous amount. There's even like a skill tree for you to unlock even more skills. And so in addition to your perfect calls and your counter, your perfect dodge counters, there's like, there's even like a flick up with your left stick towards an enemy to actually do a raw counter. So there's, there's tons and tons of depth for the people that want it. So this is, 
I mean, me being a big fan of, you know, Platinum's games, especially like, you know, like Bayonetta, I'm a huge yeah. fan of Bayonetta. Oh, yeah. And Wonderful 101, even, because yeah, I was working yeah. on that game before, too, um, I, I can't help myself, and I, <laughs> I freaked out when I was able to get my hands on it. So Michael mentioned it earlier, and um, the chips that kind of uh, approach to Neo Automata. What's the progression system like in, in Astral Chain? How does a player grow? And you mentioned it earlier with the skill tree. Can you talk a little bit more about how the character growth and player growth happens in the game? Yeah, so there's two primary ways, right? One is obviously to gain experience, right? And you can spend that experience to unlock different, uh, you know, different modules. They're basically just small modules that you can unlock to unlock new moves mm -hmm. or boost to your health or boost a particular damage or something, right? So there's that. But also I talked about the cop points earlier. And so, of course, picking up a can may not seem pretty meaningless or um, not jaywalking. Right. <laughs> Serious. I'm not, I can't make this stuff up, guys. Um, not jaywalking also is a good thing for you to help. And that'll actually increase like your health, um, right? Um, you can also customize, you know, different uh, skills, skill moves, because there's also, for each of the legions, there's, um, you hold down R button, you can either press Y or X to change up what their skill's going to be. So you can really customize the kind of, you know, the kind of play you want, not just in just, you know, spend points and unlock something, but starting to learn the details behind the strengths and weaknesses of each of the legions, as well as the, the weapon types for each of the legions, and really playing that into the way that you want to play. So if you want to be up in front, um, I know that there's a really big legion, it's got these big, like, like an axe, and so you can really slam axes into people and be up front, but you have to make sure that you're equipped and your skill set allows for you to be up front in somebody's face, as opposed to something, let's say, an arrow legion, which you want to be farther away, maybe rely on the gun a bit more, and then kind of tailor your skill set to fit that kind of game style. So there's a lot of ways to grow, but it'll be gradual, believe me. Um, you get taught little by little. Yeah, that, that's um, one of the challenging things of a, of a stylish action game is like, how do you introduce those layers? How do you tutorialize oh, that stuff? And from what I'm seeing, like, do you, does uh, Taurasan or does anyone like ever feel like, ah, oh, we need to scale this back, it, it might be too much. How do I map all of these controls uh, seamlessly to a controller? Like, does there ever, like, do you ever feel like there's feature creep to where you just have too much? <laughs> like, how do you balance that, though? You know, I will say that it's always a struggle for developers when they're figuring out what what works, right? You don't throw in features for just to have a feature because another game had a feature, right? Mm. Once you start to learn the interplay between you and your Legion, you start to figure out what works for you. And it's important that you latch onto that. And they slowly introduce the fact that, okay, here's your combo system. Let's focus on that first. They give you one Legion. Then they'll give you another Legion. You focus a bit more on a different combo set because they give you, remember, two different Legions, two different combo sets. Then you have to take a look into what the they start introducing your X baton, and so they start creep like yeah, it's a very gradual learning process. I mean, even with any um, even Bayonetta for example, you know Platinum has a really great way of introducing those features where it doesn't seem overwhelming because it really is a longer form game, and this is a bit later on in the game too. You're not just starting off all this. Dimitris is nice enough to bring a save file from work actually and build it up. Thank you, D. Um, and uh, you know he really he really did a number and unlocked a bunch of stuff for us. So all the combos you're seeing, all the all the all the um, all the legions and the weapons and what he's doing here, and just getting wrecked for a hot <laughs> second. Sorry, I had to, I had to roast him for a second. That was really blast, good. dude. I, yeah, you know, I haven't seen though. him get dizzied yet. So I was like, oh, um, yeah. He's he's done a lot of work on this. Really set it up for us. And uh, yeah, we're showing you a lot right now. Yeah, uh, I was say, and it's, you, like, there's break so down much some more. Some of the stuff that we're actually seeing on screen. Can you talk through? what Dimitris is actually doing on a moment to moment to kind of give us that platinum style of game. What are, what are the moments where this is a distinctly platinum thing, um, like a witch time, like a, you know, shadow boost, like where is it here? And so um, I will say that I think as far as his particular action on screen, everything from the air combos that he's doing, the finishers, all that, that's def of course, trademark yep. platinum game, right? <laughs> super flashy, super showy. Um, and let's just say that the more that you start to figure out that interplay between your Legion and your attacks you're doing, you start to in unlock more ways. Like right now, he's even like chain jumping, which is super, super cool to do. Um, you can send ZL out to kind of go after them and then chain jump directly to them to approach them in the air as your body. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't send your Legion out first. Right. So there's, <laughs> there's a lot in there. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's one of the most exciting parts about stylish action, just like, 
how how can I push the limits of my capabilities? Like, how can I just string everything to have just one seamless combo, well, one after the other? Rank S plus. S plus. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, yeah, we also Demetrius. got we also got rankings in here. You can't have a platinum game without getting ranked oh, on your battle. Absolutely, and that's your material code, that first time bonus. So that material code is the kind of uh, is one of the currencies that you use to upgrade your. Uh, it's kind of right. almost like the chip system, if right. you will. Like definitely, you can use that to upgrade your abilities. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I wanna... think that's the end of our case, actually. But uh, okay. again, you can definitely look a lot more uh, forward to because Astral Chain is, uh, you know, it's on its way very soon. Right. Yeah, I want to take a step back and uh, kind of talk about the story elements a little bit more because mm -hmm. you know, coming off of Mirror uh, Automata, obviously that was a Yoko Taro joint, mm -hmm. and um, I guess maybe more or less the expectations are a little high on the story end. I think that there there can be a lot of uh, like cool things that can be told through Astral Chain with it being about you know, a police force and, you know, their role in the world. So can you speak to how, you know, the team is approaching the story this time around? Okay, without giving any spoilers, I'll keep it really light. Um, All right. In the trailer, we did see someone in a chair giving orders mm. to someone. I won't tell you who that is. Um, and also, everything is not as it seems. The astral plane is something that just kind of happened. A rift opened up. Um, you know, when the, all of these enemies are flowing through it and bad things are happening to the planet and you're really there to kind of protect um, what's going on. Um, you know, the more I think about it, if I say anything else about it... <laughs> all right, I, I'm not going to... Yeah, I should. <laughs> <laughs> Demetrius over there is like, no, uh, man, I don't, don't want to get do you it. in trouble. Yeah, I, I shouldn't. No, really, it's super good. And I yeah. will say, you will find twists and turns in the story that you were not expecting. Okay. Um, so I'll leave it at that. All Definitely right. something for people to look forward to. Can you at least maybe expand on what you mean when you talk about like being a good cop? Like, will your, will your actions be reflected in the story? And will that will you see that play out in different ways? Yeah, I won't say that. <laughs> um, no, looking back at y'all, <laughs> I'll say this: it'll affect only strictly those points that I was talking about before. How you can have those good cop points? That's really what it's about. Um, and I will say that if you you know the more that you go out of your way to be a good cop, the more that you'll find some of those side side missions and side stories. So it really is to your benefit to try and do the right thing because I'm sure you'll find more nooks and crannies where people need help. Right. Uh, and they'll just give you more opportunities to increase, you know, your abilities. Tonally speaking, uh, what kind of, uh, what can people expect in terms of tone? Because a lot of the trailers that they've, uh, we've seen so far are, in classic anime fashion, heavy on the <laughs> melodrama and heavy, heavy on characters being, looking a bit upset. Um, but, you know, Platinum <laughs> Games have uh, this history of being quite playful at times and almost like humorous. Um, what kind of tone are we going to get out of Astral Chain, broadly speaking? I think you get a mix of a lot of things. I mean, even when I was messing around in the, uh, there's like a training ground that you can have, like inside your kind of your, your base in the neuron base. And uh, I remember this being this mascot, right? I know that everyone is, uh, everyone's really serious and you, you're right. You did see a little bit of the serious tone in there. But I remember going back, and there's this mascot going, hey, how can I help you? And it's just nice. I don't know if it's a bear or oh, a yeah, dog yeah. or that, something. Oh, yeah, that was in the trailer, right? It's super right? cute. And I'm just yeah. like, what? <laughs> <laughs> right? But, I mean, that's the kind of fun, right? There's a little bit of silliness there. There's a little bit of, there's a little bit of serious elements there. So the, kind of the juxtaposition, mm -hmm. I think it's about that. I think it's about, you know, no matter if you, if you like funny things or if you like things that are unexpected, Something will make you laugh, something will make you smile, and they've, they've really gone the extra length through the text, the characters, the diversity of who's represented, and also your customization options. I oh, think yeah. be, everyone will be very, very pleased. Yeah, uh, can you expand a little bit on the character customization? Because it's not just like I'm playing something that's based around a preset character. Can you uh, walk us through some of the options that you have to create your own uh, character for Astral Chain? Anime hair. Yes. Like lots, <laughs> lots of cool hair. In Demetrius's case, he actually doesn't have hair. He kind of shaved it. He does, but he just shaves it. So his character looks like him in the game. Me, I look some kind of like mismatched, like you dressed yourself <laughs> nine-year-old. Oh, it's great. It's uh, so that. I mean, you do have a lot of flexibility, males, females, and you also have a. Can I talk about the twin? I'm cool to say that. Oh, great. So you also have technically a twin. So Astral Chain, you have your character. You can be boy, girl, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you have a twin, which I think is the opposite sex, no matter which you choose. Right. Yep. And then, um, what's it called? Depending on who you pick, you know, you'll yeah, have, yeah. of course, your counterpart. And right. I'm sure your twin comes into play at some point later on, but I'm not going <laughs> to. Oh, you say, you said you, uh, you oh, weren't going to spoil anything. Come on, man. I don't want to. But uh, it's really, really interesting. Yeah. Man, I can. I, I want to watch Astral Chain. I want to watch uh, Dimitri <laughs> play it even more. I want to keep asking questions. I want to see this in action. I want to get my hands on it. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I can't. But, uh, yeah, 
this uh, we have to wrap it up, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, thank you so much, JC, for joining us and walking us through Astral Chain. I think that there's there's something special that can, can be done with the story. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the expectations are very high, but you know, I feel like I I believe in Tarasan's vision that he can uh, you know pull it off this time when he's uh, you know at the helm of this project. So uh, yeah, I'm very excited for Astral Chain. And uh, I want everyone out there to stick around, though, because we have so much more to cover here on GameSpot. We have uh, Blair Witch coming up, so stay tuned for that.